Hi there, I'm Bradley, and welcome. Today, we're going to be looking at waves. But really, we're going to be looking at something called resonance with waves. What is that? You may have heard the word resonance before, but never really seen it in action. We're going to change that today. I have a quick little experiment I'm going to go through first before I really dive a little deeper into it. So let's have a quick look. OK, so now we're here in the lab. And what I have set up here is two tuning forks. This one here, it's on an open box. One side of the box is open, the other side is flat. Just like with this tuning fork here, it's the same thing. Uh, open end on one side, flat on the other. And I also have on a string here, a ping pong ball that is just touching this one tuning fork here. Now, when I strike this tuning fork with this hammer here, we hear an audible ringing sound. This fork here is right now tuned to 256 hertz, and that's the frequency of the wave that we hear when I strike this. Now, that begs the question, why do I have this set up here like this? What's going to happen when I strike this fork and not touch this one? What's going to happen to this ping pong ball? Well, let's see. So what happened? We saw that when this tuning fork was struck, it caused this one to start vibrating a little bit. And we saw that when this ping pong ball started to oscillate back and forth just a little bit. What's happening? Well, let's dive a little deeper. What I've done here is I've drawn our experiment on a whiteboard so we can get a better look at what's happening. On the left hand side we have tuning fork A. That was the one that we struck with the hammer. And then tuning fork B, which is the one that had the ping pong ball beside it. I just haven't drawn that ball in. When A was struck, a column of air inside of the box created a sound wave. And that sound wave propagated from box A to box B. That sound wave then caused tuning fork B to vibrate. The reason both of them vibrated at all is because they were tuned to the same frequency, thus they were in resonance with each other. The driving wave caused by A needed to be at the same frequency of tuning fork B for it to even occur in the first place. If we look at the right hand side of our uh, whiteboard here, we can see that I have up above a waveform and just below some math. Now, the big part to take away from the waveform that we have above is that variable t. That's our period. That's telling you how long it took for the wave to go through one cycle. In this case, from one peak to the next peak. We can relate that to frequency very easily by taking one over the period, which gives us our frequency. Now that we have a formal definition of what resonance frequency is mathematically, we can try and explain what it actually is. As we saw in our experiment, we had one tuning fork driving a wave into this box here. In doing so, we can call this our driving wave, and it is going to have a frequency of 256 hertz the same as the tuning fork. Because this tuning fork here is set to be the same frequency as the other one, we can say that when the wave transfers into this box, it's only going to vibrate at one frequency, the frequency it's been designed to vibrate at. If this is already vibrating at 256 hertz, in turn, when it gets to the box here, it's already vibrating at the necessary 256 hertz for this tuning fork to vibrate in the first place. In doing so, these two forks are now in resonance with each other, this being the driver and the receiver. It is now vibrating at 256 hertz, just like the first. So now that we kind of have an understanding of what resonance is, we can look at some actual real world applications for where we see it in the first place. One example of where we see it is actually one that we see on the playground on a swing set. 
on a swing set, as you're pushing someone on the swing, you want to push them in such a way that they get higher on the swing set. To do this, what you do is you push at a resonant frequency with how much the actual person is moving. Another example of where we see resonance frequency is in medical imaging. MRIs are named magnetic resonance imagers, where you are kicking the protons inside of a person's body with a radio frequency that is set to a very particular frequency, that of protons in hydrogen, and in turn we are able to measure how quickly the protons are able to realign themselves. In doing so, we're able to pick up characteristic materials in the human body, such as tissue and bone, and create three-dimensional images. Well, that's wave resonance for us. We've seen it in a couple different applications. An experiment that you can do in the lab, something you can do at home at a swing set, or something that we use as medical physicists in an actual application. These are only a couple of examples where resonance actually takes place, but it's all around us. I hope you had fun and learned something fun too along the way. Take care and remember, physics is fun.